So we're here at uh, Fluendo. And uh, who are you? I'm Julien, I'm Fluendo's founder. And I'm also the CTO and we are producing here our multimedia framework, which is for app developers. The idea here is that uh, people can uh, use our SDK to uh, create mobile applications that will be able to do multimedia in a very easy and portable way. So basically you add media playback to any app? Exactly. So nowadays people have SDK to write an app, app with a single UI that will work across all mobile devices. But if you want to have this app do advanced multimedia, then you have no SDK available to you. So you will have to go into each application, each platform to figure out how to do hardware accelerated decoding and how to make your application work nice. So you do hardware acceleration on the Mali, on the, on the SGX, on the, on the video decode, on every different major device. So what do you do? Exactly. We try to use all the available APIs and we provide an SDK that makes it very high level to the app developer. So you just create the player and you say play this and it will play the format and use what's available on the platform. So if you have other accelerated H.264 decoding, it will be used automatically and you don't have to figure out all the API from Android and iOS and how to do this itself. So there's Android, iOS, what else? Android, iOS, uh, Windows, Linux. Mac, Windows, Linux, like uh, Ubuntu and stuff. Exactly. So here on Windows, we're using the DirectX video acceleration. On the Mac, we're using the VDA acceleration. Here we have the codex from Android, uh, using the AMC API. So on any Android platform, you have a codex uh, that are accelerated by the platform, and we support those. How about iOS? What goes on there? So that's uh, the Kindle Fire. This what? The Kindle Fire, so it's Fire OS which use something similar to Android. And then you have the iOS platform, and all of those provide hardware accelerated APIs. And we, we try to abstract this for the end user so that you can make your application and it plays all the formats everywhere. Since when does it uh, exist? So we just launched it. It's a few weeks old. A few weeks old? Exactly. It didn't exist before? Well, our, our solution... So our, our company is 10 years old and we've been providing uh, multimedia components for uh, hardware manufacturers. So you will find our codecs in SYNC clients, in digital signage, in uh, HP's devices, Dell's devices, Sony, Toshiba. Arcos? Arcos, no. They do their own stuff? Yeah, they do their own stuff. Are they good with that? Yeah. Because they have a history of doing video they got for a long time, right? Yeah, indeed. But so what has happened in the last few years? Like, uh, in the beginning, iOS didn't have all the codecs. Now they do? No, they don't. They still don't. Apple provides H.264 on AAC. That's it? That's it. And they, can make it do and they make it hard for you to use them. Really? Yeah. Why? Because they prefer you to stick to very high level APIs and you just have a media component that will play HLS and that's it. So if you want to use H.264 with smooth streaming or Dash, then it's not possible. So they just H.264, they don't do VP8, they don't do VP9, they don't do H.265, no, not, not even at all? No. Not at all? So if you want to support those, you have to understand how their APIs work and how to combine this with what's available on the hardware. It's, it's tricky. Tricky. And on Android, every device manufacturer is changing the, the rules, right? So Samsung will support this codec and that other one with some specific bugs and some specific workarounds, and LG will be different, and HTC again, etc. Tricky also. Yeah, it makes it very Which one hard. is more tricky? <laughs> so basically, how, uh, do you have time to sleep and stuff? I mean, it's, uh, it sounds like a big, big, big thing you're doing. Well, but are you just limiting yourself for now because you just want to have pure code? So what do you do? No, we, we have a lot of codecs. We've been doing this for 10 years, so we have uh, all the codecs that you can think of, and we also have the patent agreements, the patent license agreements with MPEG LA, Dolby, Microsoft, via licensing. Front offer. Front offer. So we know all those guys, and we have we have their blessing to make codecs for open source technologies and to provide those to other manufacturers. And that's what we wanted to bring with the one play effort, try to make this easy for app developers and make it reachable for them. VP9? So well, but those are open source codecs, right? Which you support? Yeah, yeah, those those are easy to support for us. Easy, easy. Yeah. You like VP8, VP9? Yeah, those are nice codecs. They're not they're not very used so far. Uh, but are they as good as H.264, H.265? Well, VP8 is even better. VP8 is better than H.264. Yeah, it's better than H.264, and VP9 is going to be probably better than H.265. Probably than H.265. Yeah. So uh, where are you based? We're based in Barcelona and New York. And where? In New York. New York. In the not US. In France. No, not in France. You're French, no? I'm French, yeah. French also? She's French also, yeah. So, uh, we decided how many employees? to come. We are 12 people. So That's it's it? A small company, yeah. They're doing everything? Yeah. And this API is now available? Yeah, uh, it is. 
So right here, uh, so information here. Yep. What does it say? Uh, engine, plugins, wire. One place is the media player. Uh, yes. So it's available for end users of Windows, Mac, and Linux. Yeah, so that's an end user product. And the engine is available for all platforms plus the mobile platforms. So that's the SDK. The engine is not no UI, it's just uh, what's running is underneath. Is it a big, big bunch of code? No, it's not. I mean, the Windows application is like 20, 20 megabytes. And on the devices, it's like 18 or something like that. 18 megabytes, you have an Android. That's Android, it. iOS, and it comes with all the framework, all the codecs, all the media formats, etc. So, some Android devices have all codecs? Some of them do, yeah. Which one? I mean, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a lot of codecs. Good. They also have H.265, yeah. accelerated in the hardware. Nice. It's one of the few that has it. Okay. But then, depending on the device, you will find some codecs and some won't appear. But is it the S4 with Qualcomm or with Exynos 5 that has all the codecs? I'm not sure. So I didn't know there were two. Some other ones you can say are pretty really good? Except Arcos, maybe? I haven't been trying the Arcos devices, but basically Samsung's very good in terms of codecs. Uh, others are not that good. How much it costs to use your solution? So we don't know yet. This is being ironed out. The, the framework has just been announced. It's not free? It's not free. Well, I mean, it's using a lot of open source code, so it's based on a framework that's called GStreamer, which is a, a very a very active framework that's maintained by the community, the open source community. But our solution comes on top of it to bring a very easy to use API. And that framework is going to be uh, using a, a license for developers and a license for distribution. So semi-professionals will be able to have a license to develop, and then they will be able to resell to their customers for the distribution and have a different license. So do you have competitors? Not that I know of. I mean, people are doing SDK for the UI, but for mobile multimedia playback, there's no real big solution. Although I've heard that there are rumors that some solutions are coming now. So with media, there's so much going on. It's not only playback. You want to do streaming. Yeah, exactly. You want to do uh, on-demand stuff. You want to do veteran peer-to-peer. -peer. How much do you want to support? So the first release of our SDK is mostly targeted to playback. So, but playback is pretty wide. Local playback. No, local playback streaming. So we support all the different adaptive streaming technologies, so Microsoft Smooth Streaming, MPEG Dash, HLS from Apple, and then on top of this, we support DRM with Microsoft Play Ready. Uh, we also support the different uh, DRMs that are available, like Whitevine and uh, uh, Marlin from, uh, from uh, Intertrust. So we support all of those, and uh, we also try to support DVB playback, so that you can receive live uh, digital TV on your mobile devices. But that's all playback, right? And then you go to recording and streaming, uh, but then that's a different kind of approach and a different kind of API. Peer-to-peer so yeah, -peer would be interested? Or no? it, might, it might be interesting, but to peer is more on the networking side. Uh, it's not really involving multimedia, so if, it's on the transport layer. But if you have a peer-to-peer -peer technology that you can use, then the, the, the SDK will be able to play from it. And how about this whole uh, uh, the stuff that Google is doing with the uh, Hangouts, the protocol for, for HTML5? For chat. Uh, what do you call it? The HTML5 video streaming. Web, WebRTC. RTC. Yeah. Is that something that's involved here, or not? Not really, because WebRTC is about uh, doing uh, real-time communication, so people can chat together, etc. So it's very specific kind of codecs, very specific kind of network protocols. And that's not really where we believe we can bring value. Cool. Okay. So checking it out.